Yo, yo, welcome back. Today we are looking at the Clifford Heath 2025 R10 Plus board. This is the long awaited board for the Portapack Hacker F1 for the H4 or H2. So, why this board? What's so special about it? Well, a few things. If you look here on the bottom of this board, we no longer have these SMA clock in and outs that 90% of us that are into this, into this uh, port pack Hacker F1, H2, or H4M do not use. Now, more importantly than that though, this board fixes a lot of known issues with the, the stock board on the H4M. And those known issues are the ability to accidentally blow your amp fairly easily. Um, there is no uh, amp protection on there, so transmitting or receiving too close to the antenna uh, could blow your amp, and then with that, your uh, reception and your ability to transmit or receive goes down. So that is one. Now, the other main thing, um, this board is not an R10 base board. It is based off of the R5 version best parts of the R10 and then tweet on top of that, but it's still an R5 base board. And with that means there was a known issue with the R10 boards that was ignored. Um, that's neither here nor there. We won't get into the politics of that, but there was a lot of issues with it. And those issues were interference, uh, obviously the diode and the ability to uh, blow your amp. It offers the bias T block diode and the version detect resistor divider. And then it also has a completely new USB protection and RF isolation chip, um, which is important because when you usually have power going into a device that is also trying to receive radio signals or transmit, uh, they don't like it sometimes and you'll get some feedback or you'll get noise. Now the Hacker F board as it is, is a noisy board. Um, that's just how it is. It is not an instrument grade uh, piece of equipment. It is a jack of all trades, much like me, and master of none, much like me. Um, so that is a known uh, statement and it is passed around uh, widely in the Mayhem uh, community and the Porter Pack Discord. Everybody knows that. So uh, you get what you pay for and just know that when you purchase one of these, it is a great tool to learn and experiment with. Um, but if you are looking for something to fully dive into the RF world and you want something for a specific purpose, then you're better off getting a board or a radio for that specific purpose. Now, with that being said, today I will show you how to swap your board out if you do not know how to. Starting out, we are going to take apart the front portion of the H4M. And a lot of this will also be similar to the H2. First things first, I wanna pop off my SMA kind of protectors here. Those nuts are hard. It helps if you have a little 3D printed wrench for SMA, um, like I do, just to loosen up those guys. And then from there, you can use your fingers to unscrew them. And then we're gonna use a little E driver here to pop off these four screws on the front of the housing or chassis. All right, now once that's off, we can then gently disconnect that top plate. And then I'm gonna flip the guy over. I'm gonna use my finger to hold these little standoffs from free spinning. And then on the top portion, you might just need to pinch it down a little bit to keep those guys from free spinning as well. So once those are unscrewed, you can lift from the bottom SMA portion, and then you're gonna slide the board out that way, and then we can put aside the housing for now. Now once we're here, we're just gonna kind of tip the board over to get any of the remainder risers or standoffs out of the way. Now, once we're here, we are going to gently pull these two pieces apart. And by gently, I mean very gently. And I'm going to start from the bottom SMA portion here, start prying, and it helps if you kind of just do one side and then this side and then kind of just rock it back and forth. And then the bottom, there we have the two bolts. While we're here, this would be a great time to swap your battery out 
because the stock battery in the H4M is crap. Uh, go watch my rapid last battery, battery video if you haven't to understand why it's a crappy battery. So luckily I have a Rabbit Labs battery here that I purchased just for this occasion. And I've been holding it since then because the battery in the video that I did for Rabbit Labs, I actually gifted. So we have that battery disconnected and then we can connect our Rabbit Labs battery to the port pack portion of the board. Now you'll notice again, there are no bottom SMAs anymore for the clock in and clock out. Um, they do send them separately. If you do want to solder those on yourself, you can, but uh, I'm not going to because I never use them. So this board will go into either another project or maybe I will just gift it away on my Discord for somebody that is looking for just a um, Hacker F1 R10C board. All right, little cyclist here. Before we put the board back together, like we discussed earlier, we're gonna go ahead and flash it. These do not come flash with any firmware on them. So to do so, we are going to go and download a few files. We're gonna to go to the Mayhem page. So we're gonna to go to a Porta Pack Mayhem. And then we're gonna to go to custom firmware. We're gonna to go to the latest firmware, the 2.1.0, scroll down. Now you need to download this file down here on the assets area, the Mayhem 2.1.0 firmware.zip. Download that guy and extract, 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 okay? Extract the file, because if not, you're gonna have issues. Now once that file is extracted, we're gonna go find it right there to the Mayhem 2.1. Now you need to do a few things first. We're gonna go to the driver. You need to install this dpinst exe driver install that guy and then once that's installed we are ready to flash our firmware now to do so we're going to hold down the reset button right here and then the dfu button right there so hold both of those down like that we're going to plug in our usb c then we're going to release the reset so the one on the away from the antenna and then release dfu now once those are released we're going to go to the dfu hacker f1 bat right there Double click that guy and we're gonna hit enter. And then just like that, we have flashed that portion, the hacker ref portion of that. Next, we're gonna enter. Now, we're not gonna do anything to it. Now we're gonna go to flash port pack mayhem bat. Double click that guy right there, hit enter. And then let it do its thing. And then here we see writing finish. Please disconnect and reconnect your hacker ref to run the new firmware. Okay, so I'm gonna disconnect that. All right, so with the new board there, we're gonna go ahead and start piecing this unit back together. And to do so, we're just gonna just reverse our process of what we did earlier. So we got the board there. We're just going to now marry those two pieces together as they need to go. When we put these back together, we wanna to make sure that they're all lined up. All those pins go into their appropriate slots. That way we're not cross pinning anything and or damaging any of our pins. Gently start squeezing my unit back together. One thing I will say is that when you're putting your board back together, go ahead and take your little standoffs here, right? The little risers. And we're gonna go ahead and put in those. And then we're gonna put the top screw in. And you'll understand why we do that here in a second. You don't have to go all the way in, just kind of go a few turns on those threads. Now that we have those risers in place, now we can take our bottom chassis and then we can slide in those two pieces. Now the reasoning why we did that is because when we go to put in the bottom screws, now we have something holding in those little standoffs and now they won't free spin on us because you can then apply pressure to that first screw. One, two, three, all right. Now that we have those four screws on, we can then unscrew the top screws that we're holding in those little standoff supports, riders, whatever you want to call them. And now we can put on our front housing. On the front housing, you need to go from the headphone jack first. So that way you can clear that and then it'll pop on. And then now we can go ahead and put back in those four screws. 
And then from there, we no longer need these, but I'm gonna put them back on this board here so that way I don't lose them. And then we'll just use these little rubber condoms that I haven't left over to protect those. That way, whenever I give it away or whatever, they are nice and protected. So going back to the H4M here, we're gonna put back on my washer. We're gonna put back on that screw or that nut right there. Use my little 3D printed SME wrench, crank that guy lightly down and then put on my BNC connector. There is that. And then we're gonna plug in the antenna. And that is how you update your board on your HackerF H2 or H4M and also how to easily flash the firmware on that new board. So I hope that helps. Thank you for all, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or on my Discord. All links for all this stuff is in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do the fun stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.